Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Now, when I start my various woodworking projects, uh, I always think about things like the moisture content of wood, whether it's going to uh, continue to move or distort after I've started making things and so on. And what I've done for really special projects like the desk that you may have seen me build and that TV cabinet I've made recently is I've bought the wood well in advance. I've then kept it in my workshop to let it dry out nice and slowly and I've even taken it into the house and left it there for about eight weeks. And that's before I have started to do any machining, before I've tried to get it flat, before I've tried to get it square. And in that way I've gone about a sort of non-scientific way of trying to uh, offset the possible effects of wood being at the wrong moisture content. And then uh, one of my viewers uh, wrote to me and said, have I ever done anything about uh, moisture meters uh, and would I uh, do something? So I asked some professional woodworker friends of mine uh, what they did about it. Uh, I spoke to my timber yard and I also did a lot of research on the internet. And I came up with a particular brand that I thought would be very useful to tell you about. So I contacted them. They are Wagner in the United States and they very kindly sent to me uh, one of their uh, moisture meters so that I can tell you a little bit about measuring moisture content in wood and I'm going to tell you about this particular meter as well. But first I need to uh, give you a little bit of background theory. It's very simple. Uh, basically what we're trying to achieve when we dry wood out is to get it to the same moisture level as the humidity in the environment where it's going to be used. And if that's your house then you've got to bring that moisture content down probably quite a reasonable amount. And by having this equilibrium moisture content, that's the humidity uh, being the same as the moisture content of the wood, uh, then uh, everything's perfect because the wood will not get any wetter and it won't get any drier. And in those circumstances, the wood will be very stable. Now, a piece of wood, when it expands or contracts, does it mainly across the grain. So if this piece of wood, it's a piece of walnut, uh, were uh, fairly uh, damp or uh, wet, uh, then as it dried out, so it would shrink more across here than it would along uh, the length or along the grain. And that's why when we uh, have uh, raised panel doors and uh, panel work in houses, uh, that uh, the uh, panels themselves are not glued in to the frame. Uh, that way uh, the panels can move around as they expand and contract and there'll be no stresses and strains on them which means they're less likely to crack or distort. Now when things really go wrong uh, these sort of things happen. You get these sort of uh, splits or shakes. Uh, you can get the wood which distorts this way, cupping and so on uh, and all sorts of other uh, things can go wrong. Distortion and twisting and so on. Now, uh, the individual piece of wood and the way it's been cut from the tree can make a huge difference to the way that it behaves as it dries out. Now if you look at the grain here it's going uh, across like so but as we get uh, towards this part so you can see the grain uh, is more curved and that's as it's getting closer to the center of the tree. And what tends to happen with this type uh, here is that it's going to cup more, it's going to twist round on itself a little bit more. Whereas when the grain is going across the piece of wood as it is here, uh, then the effects are not going to be quite so dramatic. And between the two of these you can sometimes get uh, a lot of distortion because uh, this piece is trying to do one thing and this piece is being relatively stable and not wanting to do anything at all. Now there are two ways that moisture meters go about their business. Uh, one way, which um, is uh, quite invasive, uh, is to have the type of meter, which you may have seen them, with a couple of prongs. And what you do is uh, you jab uh, those two prongs into the piece of wood uh, and they have to go in a reasonable amount and then uh, it, the machine measures the resistance uh, between those two probes that have been pushed into the surface of the wood. Now that may be all very well if you've got uh, roughed uh, timber that is going to be machined substantially uh, before uh, it's finished, uh, but there are times when you want to measure the moisture content uh, at a later stage after you've given it an initial plane around like this. So that method can be pretty invasive. 
And also it has the problem uh, that no matter how hard you try, when you try and stick those prongs in, they're not going to go very far. Uh, and therefore, when it's measuring the resistance, in other words, it's making its assessment of the moisture level, it's going to do it close to the surface. Now, there's another type of meter, and one that uh, I'm very grateful for Wagner sending to me uh, is this one, and it's got no contacts at all. And it uses a different type of technology. It's got a, a sensor surface here, uh, and it uses a sort of capacitance measurement process and it's sending effectively an electric field into the wood and it goes in quite a reasonable way. And because it doesn't have those uh, prongs going in, uh, it's not going to damage the wood. Uh, it's not going to uh, give you uh, a shallow reading. It's going to give you a, a truer reading. And also it can be used much more quickly. You can take it out of your pocket and slap it down on the surface of a piece of wood like that and you've got a, a measurement straight away. And if you want to go up there, you go up there, go down there, you go down there. And you can measure uh, the moisture content as quickly as I'm moving this around right now. Now the machine is very simple to operate. There are just two buttons, one here and one there. The left hand button is the on off button. You just press it once like so and immediately it displays the firmware uh, setting of the machine. Uh, and then it's in operation mode straight away. To turn it off, you press and hold uh, this button and it then turns itself off. It will turn itself off automatically after one minute if uh, nothing changes. In other words, no uh, meter reading changes uh, and no other buttons are pressed. The button on the right is used to select the species of wood or the specific gravity of the wood. And this is a key thing when you're measuring uh, moisture content of any species of wood. You need to know what the specific gravity of the wood is uh, and then enter it here and then you'll get accurate readings. Now in order to change the species setting uh, you first of all need to identify the wood uh, and in my case I'm going to go for white oak and it says it should be on 68. So I'm going to press the species button once and it shows me I'm currently on 60. Now if I press this button just one click at a time it's going to go up by one notch each time and there is my 68. If I were to press and hold this, it would go up in increments of 10. And I'll keep it pressed. It's going to go all the way up to 100. It'll start back down at 20. And we'll get back to the 60, and I'll make it 68. There's 60, and then just eight little clicks like this. And that's on 68. So we're now ready to measure our wood. And here's my piece of oak. And you can see I'm now taking readings quite satisfactorily. Uh, it says in the instructions you should uh, press this onto the surface of the wood uh, with a firm pressure. Uh, uh, but you can certainly move it around and, and get the uh, readings at different parts of the piece of wood. And Wagner have created a free app uh, which will uh, go on your a smartphone and uh, amongst other things it's got the instructions for the various moisture meters. It's also got uh, all these specific gravities of a huge variety of species of wood. Now uh, they do uh, tell you to uh, make sure when you're uh, putting it on the surface of the wood, make sure the surface of the wood is not soaking wet. If it is, uh, dry the surface off and let it just dry a little bit more in the air for a few minutes. Um, and also if you're going on to rough sawn timber, uh, you will uh, need to press down uh, to get a truer reading. Uh, and uh, on uh, a smoother surface, uh, you don't need to press quite so hard. And you can just slide this around and get continuous um, readings as you go. Now, there's one demonstration which I thought was quite fascinating. I saw it on the uh, Wagner website. Uh, and that really just shows you uh, how uh, deep the machine goes when it's making measurements. I've got a relatively thin piece of wood here. 
uh, and you can see the uh, reading I'm getting. Well, I'm now going to put my hand on the other side. My hand, of course, is a source of uh, great wetness. <laughs> and there we go. You see how that reading has changed? I'll move my hand away, and now it's gone back again. So that shows the penetration uh, of the, uh, this technology. The capacitance technology means it's going far deeper into the wood, which means you're getting a, a far truer reading of the moisture content. Uh, and one last thing to demonstrate, uh, supposing you're uh, reaching into an awkward place uh, to get a, a meter reading, uh, sometimes that happens, uh, and you can't quite see the, uh, the display uh, when it's in that position, well, just press the uh, on-off button briefly, uh, and it will then freeze uh, that reading, and you can probably see that there. Well, I'm visiting the uh, workshop of a friend of mine who's a professional woodworker, and uh, uh, he was one of the ones who said, if you're going to get a moisture meter, you've got to go to Wagner, because <laughs> he's got one as well. And he's had his for donkey's years, and uh, I'm going to compare it to mine. They both work on the same principle. Well, uh, here's my uh, friend's uh, machine, um, and it's giving a reading on this piece of walnut of just about 10. Uh, put mine on there, and uh, that is also giving a reading of uh, just about 10. Well, I'm here in my friend's uh, drying room and uh, I've opened the doors. He'll probably be very cross with me, but never mind. Um, and you can see again the utility of one of these. You can really very quickly check. Uh, this is English walnut here and it's absolutely beautiful. I'm very jealous. And you can check uh, how each individual board is doing. And don't forget, this is penetrating quite well down into these thick lumps of wood. And this is the uh, storage area, which is the final uh, stage prior to wood going into the machine shop for um, whatever uh, machining it needs. Uh, and uh, you would just do a final check here before taking out some of these bits, which have been uh, sticked up for uh, quite some time. But you would still need to uh, check it just in case. And you can quickly check large batches of wood very, very easily indeed. So I'm taking advantage of whilst visiting family down here in the West Country to uh, drop in at my favourite timber supplier, Timber Source of Froome. And uh, they're allowing me to have a wander around there. Stacks of timber uh, with the Wagner in my hand. Excellent. And here we've got some oak flooring which they've machined up and uh, that's going out to a customer today and this is all uh, about 9.3 uh, and that's pretty good. The customer will be pleased with that. Now ordinarily you would expect to be buying wood from a timber yard which is probably between 12 and 16% uh, moisture content. Uh, sometimes it's going to be a little bit higher. Uh, this has uh, only recently come in. Uh, this is just on the uh, 17 uh, mark, but this has been here for a while and that's uh, just under just under nine and so it's quite useful having uh, some means of checking uh, before you buy, particularly if you want to put uh, the wood straight into production. And I've got an interesting one here, they pointed out to me it's a four inch square um, oak uh, and it was supposedly kiln dried when it was delivered here uh, to the timber yard uh, especially for a customer, uh, and uh, they checked the moisture content and it was far too high for kiln-dried wood, so something had happened. But that's the advantage of a moisture meter, you can check. And you can probably see this is giving a reading of uh, about 28%, uh, which is uh, crazy, that's far too much for uh, a staircase construction. There we are, I just stopped it when it was saying 29. Well, I've learned a huge amount in the last couple of weeks whilst I've had this Wagner moisture meter. And I must say, I really wish I'd known all of that many years ago. I have had the old whoopsie uh, due to uh, building things with wood which wasn't quite the right moisture content. Now, I really think this is a good bit of kit. I've got no hesitation in recommending it to you. I'd like to just give a quick thank you uh, to uh, Nisa Gallagher uh, from uh, Wagner, who's helped me set this up, and also uh, to Gavin Wiley of Havewoods in the UK, uh, where this has come from. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.